thank you for being here. I want to thank my mom, who is the loudest cheerer. <laughs> She's actually not here today. But uh, it's so heartening to see so many friends uh, who have decided to come and spend this hour with us. Uh, those of you who were with us last night at our campaign headquarters as we secured that primary victory, uh, frankly, a pretty resounding victory. Uh, and then if you would show up again today, uh, and many anew, we are so grateful. But uh, we're not really here to talk about me. We're here to talk about something that concerns all of us. For far too long, the first district of Oregon has been the forgotten district. But starting today, as this country turns their eyes and ears to this special election, each of you are going to help them discover, those people around the country, that Northwest Oregon is in fact one of the greatest homes and also a home to fantastic communities with strong civic-minded families. And many of you here are representing those people. It's also the home to schools and universities with committed teachers, innovative companies that drive this state's economy, fisheries, forests, and farmlands that provide sustainable jobs, and ports that help us share our goods to people around the world. This beautiful part of Oregon, from Astoria to Sherwood, from St. Helens to Hillsboro, from Portland to McMinnville, and the people, the great people who live here, they have much to be proud of. But there's one thing that does not make us proud. One thing that in fact has caused us to lose confidence as a people, and that one thing is our federal government. And once a great source of our pride, Washington, D.C. now seems more and more distant to those of us like me, like Allison, who grew up here, maybe raised a family here or built a business and created jobs here. It's become a place where the well-connected spend money on lobbyists to rig the system against the middle class. It's a place that racks up a mountain of debt for our children and grandchildren while seeking to micromanage our entrepreneurs and our schools. A great people, a great people, are being held back by a broken and out-of-touch government 3,000 miles away. In this dynamic place we call home, too many moms and dads are out of work. Young people struggle to start careers. Business owners face the prospects of higher taxes and mounds of paperwork. And today's class of lawyers turned career politicians are unwilling and ill-equipped to solve problems. This election, as we look ahead to the next 84 days, comes down to one basic question. Do we want to change course and make things better, or do we want more of the same? Mm -hmm. More of the same is having another representative for the first district beholden to those who boosted her to the next rung on the political career ladder. During this primary that just concluded last night, you may have heard that I took a lot of heat for refusing to sign certain pledges that were written by DC insiders. As you probably know by now, I'm an independent thinker. <laughs> and just in case you're wondering, I am not running for John Boehner. <laughs> I'm not running for a party, I'm running for a people. I'm running for Connie, who is a cafe owner in Forest Grove, who says she needs relief from high taxes so she can actually hire people. Mm -hmm. I'm running for Darlene, a hairstylist in King City, who tells me she wants a representative who knows what it's like to start a small business. I'm running for Joanne and Wayne of Tigard who want to be sure that Social Security and Medicare will continue to be there for them in their golden years. Rather than going with the flow, I prefer taking a different course for the people of the 1st District, and today I make a commitment to Darlene and Connie and Joanne and Wayne and you. It's called the Cornelis Commitment. First, I will be, I will be loyal to the people of Oregon, not Washington, D.C. Second, I will honor the promises made to seniors through the benefits they've earned over a lifetime of work. Third, I will put the interests of Oregon above the interests of any political party. 
And fourth, I will raise your expectations of what a member of the U.S. House of Representatives should be. Some cynically will ask, but don't all politicians say that? Of course they do. That's why we don't need any more politicians. <laughs> before you as a 47-year-old small business owner and a father of three, who until recently had no aspirations to run for public office. But over the years, I will tell you, I've been inspired by watching Oregon public servants like Mark Hatfield, like Tom McCall, and Vic Atia, who are known for their independence and their effectiveness. Now I'm motivated to follow their lead in showing this country what you and I in Oregon can do. The first Cornelis commitment is to be loyal to Oregonians. It's time we have a representative that trusts Oregonians to create jobs, not the politicians in Washington, D.C. How do we do that? By giving Oregonians more freedom and opportunity to create and invent and prosper for themselves, their families, and their communities. We can unshackle Oregonians by overhauling and simplifying our tax code. It's 10,000 pages of special perks that allows the powerful and well-heeled to avoid taxes while sticking Oregon small businesses and others and their workers with the bill. Now, my opponent, Senator Bonamici, raised taxes and fees on Oregonians more than 50 times in just five years while a member of the Oregon legislature. And she's not done. Now, when Oregonians are struggling to create or find jobs, she wants to raise taxes in a broken system without reforming it. Now, does she think that it's right that last year General Electric made $14 billion and paid zero federal income tax? Does anybody think that those friends in high, and people who have friends in high places will pay taxes as long as there are loopholes for them to take advantage of? Not a chance. Lawyer-turned-Senator Bonamici may defend a broken system that concentrates power in Washington, D.C., but I want to fix it. tax breaks for the well-connected, lower rates across the board, and trust Oregonians to make investment decisions based on what's best for job creation and this economy. I ask you, are you ready to change our tax system so Oregonians can create jobs right here at home? I will honor the commitments we've made to Oregon seniors. I've said it many times before, and I'm happy to say it again. I oppose the privatization of Social Security, period. People have paid into this program throughout their working life, and they should receive their promised retirement income. And I'm equally committed to protect the Medicare program and make sure we have a strong system of health care for our seniors. Senator Bonamici says that she supports the $500 billion cut to Medicare passed last year in Congress, which will come largely out of a program called Medicare Advantage. Yet this year, 254,000 Oregon seniors have chosen Medicare Advantage because they felt it was a better plan for them. Believe it or not, Senator Bonamici, who doesn't support Medicare choice, wants to put everybody in a public-only plan. According to Medicare's own chief actuary, Senator Bonamici's Medicare cut will force half of the Oregon seniors in Medicare Advantage into a public-only plan. As a state legislator, Senator Bonamici gets a choice in health care. Why not seniors? I ask you, are you ready to stop this assault on seniors' choice? Yeah. Next, 
text, I commit that I will put the interests of Oregonians above that of any party, including my own. For the last 16 years, I've been a small business owner. Allison and I, as you know, using our spare bedroom in our home and dipping into our savings account, we dreamed of doing something, building something right here in our home state. As any small business owner will tell you, every day is an exercise in working together and solving problems. People have asked, since I've never held office, what prepares me for Congress? Well, what makes anyone think another longtime politician who's never created a job knows anything about growing the economy? If all Washington, D.C. needed were more people who've held public office, we'd be riding high right now. <laughs> is full of people who've held public office for years. How's that working out for us? I am especially prepared to serve in Congress because I learned one very important lesson as a small business owner. Putting your finger in the wind or avoiding tough decisions is not leadership. Senator Bonamici claims she's bipartisan because she helped redraw district boundaries for elections. <laughs> How fitting. <laughs> How fitting that a politician, while preparing to run for Congress herself, would think it's an accomplishment to create safe legislative districts for her political friends. <laughs> and while in Salem, Senator Bonamici, she voted with the majority of her party 98% of the time. 98%. She has a more partisan voting record than David Wu. Wow. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we don't need more of the same. Voting 98% of the time with your party is not leadership, it's button pushing. <laughs> Whether you're a Republican, an independent or a Democrat, I want you to know that I could not vote with my party 98% of the time and still consider myself a true representative for Oregon. Whether you're Republican, independent, or Democrat, I want you to know that I can't support a broken tax system that favors mega corporations and well-connected insiders over our small businesses. And whether you're a Republican, Independent, or Democrat, I want you to know that I won't support a system that wastes your hard-earned tax dollars on fraudulent and corrupt spending while our national debt continues to multiply. gentlemen, Washington, D.C. is filled with typical politicians who moved up the political career ladder for Congress. We don't need one more. Mm. It's time to think differently. It's time to ask what is best, not for a party, not for a politician, but for Oregon. Which of us, Senator Bonamici or me, do you believe will stand up and stand out in advocating for this outstanding district? As I shared with you earlier, the fourth Cornelius commitment is to raise Oregonians' expectations of what a member of the United States Congress should be. Will you do that today, right now? Will you raise your expectations? In these next 84 days, as you look at this race, will you challenge everyone you talk to to do the same? Raise your expectations. The first congressional district of Oregon is without a doubt the best district in the country. <laughs> I've traveled the country, I've traveled Oregon, I know whereof I speak. Sorry those of you who live in the third or fifth district. <laughs> Yet despite this greatness, David Wu, and those who covered for him by putting party before the public's interests have given us the worst possible congressional representation. None. Senator Bonamici is part of the very political establishment that enabled David Wu and covered up his offensive behavior. 
Now that establishment is doing whatever it takes to put her in Congress. But thankfully, voters of the first district will cast the vote. We don't need more of the same. Our children don't deserve more of the same, and Oregon cannot afford more of the same. This is our chance to move in a new direction, and it's my commitment to you to be loyal to Oregon, to protect our seniors, to put progress over party, and to raise your expectations of what a member of Congress should be. Are you ready for a new direction? Yeah. enacted a budget in three years. Are you ready to send a small business owner to Congress who knows how to manage a budget? Yeah. And who has successfully met a payroll for 193 straight months? Yeah. Washington to solve problems, not play politics? Yeah. Friends, is Oregon ready for a new kind of representative? Yeah. Yeah. for your renewed support and say to all of you, it's time to get to work. Thank you very much.